I want to bring in Claudio Popa now, certified security and privacy expert. Claudio, good to have you here on CTV News Channel. What are your thoughts here on, I, well, it's a research project right now, but, you know, exactly what the sort of the end game on all of this is, is to sort of determine, you know, really what's going on with regards to distractive driving. Hello, Angie. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, listen, uh, any time that uh, people are photographed using high-resolution cameras inside their vehicles, um, it's it's a warrantless collection of essentially private data, mm. um, and it's always creepy. But it's not always illegal, and and in this particular case, the 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 research has made it clear that this data is collected on public roads. Um, uh, faces will not be utilized, and really, it's it's it tends to be more of a behavioral study mm -hmm. than something that seeks to invade people's privacy to begin with. However, uh, there are many different ways to do this, mm -hmm. and and good ways to do it versus um, uh, ones that would bring about public concern include. Uh, proper communications with the public, proper due diligence with the technology uh, that's provided by a foreign company, and certainly the um, inclusion of privacy assessments that are done according to the best practices laid out by our privacy commissioners. When you're talking about informing the public and proper education for the public, what would you mean? what do you mean by that? Well, I think there's something to be said for not setting off alarms. Mm. Um, certainly people uh, people can expect to have a re reasonable uh, degree of privacy in their cars, but not everywhere. On mm. a public road, one of the, the conditions to us all using a public road is that we're keeping other people safe. So if there is a way to detect when we're not um, uh, safeguarding our own safety as well as that of others, well, that gives law enforcement the right to uh, uh, to to watch, to to try to uh, capture as much of that risky behavior as possible. Mm -hmm. However, when we use language like uh, this technology uses sensors to capture high definition images to mm -hmm. detect drivers distracted by their phones, uh, anyone can jump to conclusions and say, well, you know what, they're taking high res pictures of my face and not only that they know where I am at that time so they're collecting not just my likeness mm. my face potentially who's in the car with me and where I'm at at a particular point in time right that smells like a privacy invasion and certainly people are encouraged to call their privacy commissioner mm. to to inquire about that but the the key thing when you're doing studies like this is to ensure that the technology that's being used doesn't over collect information mm. and worse contribute to a database that would result in exporting that information to let's say Australia right that and, would be and I guess you're kind of alluding then to a possibility of any kind of a data breach a hacking or, or whatnot because we've had, had conversations about this where how do we keep ourselves protected in this age of technology this research clearly has the proper and good intentions, but as you say there, there's got to be some proper checks and balances. Absolutely. Um, there are other sectors where this kind of technology has reached a certain level of maturity mm. that should be taken a look at. For example, in the retail space, they have technologies that are high-quality cameras that produce low-quality images that essentially turn into a stick figure. And the way that stick figure is, is created is not by taking a high resolution image first and then reducing it. Mm -hmm. It's by not collecting the data in the first place. That makes a world of difference in the way that compliance is ensured, that security is protected, and of course people's privacy rights are safeguarded and they have that reasonable expectation of privacy. Okay. Um, that's the kind of technology that we should all look for and mm -hmm. it all starts by asking those companies that produce this kind of innovative technology to say, are you collecting and then reducing uh, the the detail right. or are you managing to not collect in the first place and protect? Essentially, uh, it's a preventative control so that you're protecting not just the privacy but the security of people's data. 
uh, right at the outset. It's a critical element in all of this, indeed, as we're trying to keep our steady and keep ourselves safe all at the same, uh, all in the same round there. Claudio, it's good to have you as always. Claudio Popa is a certified security and privacy expert. Thank you again for this. My pleasure.